And then there are U.S. taxes. Yes, they are going up, but more than likely, they'll be held in check by some of the same forces that curbed the more egregious proposals that could have really slipped into that last rescue package. I know the progressive wish list is frightening, but moderates are now flexing their muscle and pushing back. But the changes in who could see higher taxes from individuals earning 400000 to households, that's a tough one, folks. It's a harsh bomb, uh, bombshell to swallow. Uh, now, maybe overall I'm being too sanguine. Uh, so let's get the read from Lafford Tangler Investments, Chief Investment Officer Nancy Lee Tangler, uh, Kingsview Wealth Management CIO, Fox Business Contributor Scott Martin, and Wealth Enhancement Group C, uh, Senior Vice President Nicole Webb. Uh, Nancy, I, you know, listen, I, I know the market bias right now is still to the downside, but I don't see where the big risks are. I'm feeling like now's the time, if, you know, we always talk about buy the dip, now's the time to start looking to buy that dip. What do you think? Yeah, Charles, I mean, we've been waiting for a correction. We may have gotten it in the NASDAQ, but if you look at um, what's going to drive this market forward from here, it is going to be um, continued strong economic data and earnings. So we, we think you buy the dips for a while. It's not a forever strategy, but we're pretty bullish, and uh, we sort of see this market as more analogous to the 1990s productivity-driven right. growth than, than, you know, most recent years. You know, Scott, I, I know buy the dip is not forever, but it's worked pretty good since March of 2009. Uh, now, of course, yeah, I'm not one of these guys who wants anytime everyone comes on and we're down 1%, I'm asking if you're buying a dip. But to Nancy's point, the Nasdaq certainly looks like it's run its course. What do you think? Yeah, 50% uh, of the time, Charles, it works every time. And I think in this environment, like Nancy said, <laughs> that's what you need to do. I mean, that's the weird thing, right? It's like, you know, as investors, a lot of us were chasing these crazy stocks from last year, and I'm talking about the Zooms, the PayPals, the Squares, the DocuSigns, the NVIDIAs, the Teladocs, the Pelotons. I mean, that could go on and on. And they weren't pulling back, but everybody kept piling in. And so finally, we're getting some pullbacks. We're, we're getting what, in, in our estimation, is an overreaction to the 10-year Treasury note uh, going up in yield. As you said, Charles, and I quote, the yields will go up. I mean, they do that in times when we're going to have better economic recovery ahead. So when you get the gift, Mr. and Mrs. Investor, of a pullback of 25, 35, maybe even 40 percent in some of the names I mentioned already, those are times when you've got to go in and hold these things for the next six to 12 months. You know, Nicole, it's so interesting because uh, for, the spur for the last half of last year, there were a lot of skeptics out there who's pushed back on the notion that we were in a V-shaped recovery. Those same voices are now saying the recovery is too strong. It's too strong. So help me out. Where are we going from here? Yeah, you know, to piggyback on what Scott and Nancy just said, I think the rest of the year has a rosy outlook, a lot of optimism, a lot of money. We keep hearing the narrative about all the cash on the sidelines. There are a couple of risks that will create buying opportunities in the short term. And I think one of those is the lockdowns that we're seeing in France and Italy right now. And so that might create a little bit of uneasiness in the U.S. markets in the week to come. You know, additionally, I think one of the concerns that we're going to hear brought forward is we really have great consumption numbers. So even if we go back to full employment, where does the growth come from? And so, you know, while I do think that this year is going to be a buy those little dips, you just heard it, it is great advice. Um, I think continued uneasiness in, until we do normalize interest right. rates, but at some point they will. And so investors have to be Well, well Nicole, let me jump optimistic. in for one second. What about things we just absolutely could not do over the last year? I mean, certainly airline tickets or airline sales will go up. Concert sales will go up. I mean, there are some unique things we could spend money on that we couldn't spend money on for a whole year. Absolutely. And I think we're all chomping at the bit to get back out there. We're just waiting for the... A-OK, -okay, let's get going. And I do think there's still value there. You know, I do also think there was a simple pause this week in the oil markets. And as we talk about that, get out of the house, return to travel, you know, can, right. can re return to that normal consumption. You know, those fun days ahead are going to be profitable for this economy. Uh, put me down for every concert. If, if you know a show, <laughs> let me know. I'm going. By the way, today I'm playing. <laughs> FedEx is the big winner. Uh, let me know. Anyone, Scott, I'm with you. Buy an extra ticket. Buy two. 
Uh, I'm telling you. Uh, now, today uh, we were reminded that earnings do matter. FedEx has some strong numbers, strong guidance. And Scott, I want to go back to you on this because uh, Nancy just referenced it. Er, what about earnings? Right? I mean, there was a time when earnings were the main thing, particularly guidance, the mother's milk of stock markets. I think it's going to matter more than buying yields going forward. It might. I, I have this concern, though, Charles, because it's just a better headline right now that the bond yield story is going to overshadow maybe the next quarter of earnings reports, which, frankly, is so funny. I mean, it's right around the corner. I mean, April's knocking on the door here. So April, May, I still believe the headlines are going to be dominated by, oh, my gosh, the 10 years at 2 percent. Like, everybody needs to freak out. So we're going to lose a quarter, I think, Charles, of that earnings uh, potential, the earnings attention that it deserves. But what's going to happen is if you're an at-home investor and you're missing some of those great indicators, you're going to be left holding the bag of these interest rate scares and not paying attention to some of these great earnings out there, which by the time they actually do show up and the market does turn its attention there, it may be too late to get into right. some of those stocks that have shown up so well in the next couple months. Nancy, really an interesting aspect about today's session. First of all, the VIX is getting hammered. The VIX is down. We're near the lowest point we've been in a year, the so-called fair index. So bond yields have rocketed higher. That means value stocks should be up. No, growth is rocking today. What is the, what is the message of this market for you, Nancy? Well, day to day, it's kind of head snapping. But um, for us, uh, <laughs> like Scott, <laughs> Scott just said, we're using the opportunity or the weakness as an opportunity to add to tech. So we don't think the tech story is over. And I've, I've said that on your show many times. We're not buying growth at any price. We're buying growth at a reasonable price. And our favorite investment theme is where consumer, which Nicole was mentioning, um, it, and it will be robust, where consumer meets digital. And that those are some of the names that that we really look for to add and on right. weakness. <clears throat> well, today, today, Etsy is the number one performer in the market. Would that qualify? That's not one we're watching, unfortunately. It's a little too lofty for us still. But but other names like some of the traditional restaurants, uh, Starbucks is, is, has okay. a fast digital. I got program. you. I understand. Yeah. I got you. That's that's William Sonoma. They reported uh, in the digital, the, the e-commerce was 70 percent of overall revenue. And that stock is taking off like a rocket. Nicole, same question to you. Do you find it intriguing for the last five weeks? Uh, investors were told uh, yields up, growth down. Today, yields have rocketed higher and growth names, particularly communication services, through the roof. No, I, I, I... I think that growth is here to stay and that story continues and the ecosystems are so sticky. Um, you know, I think it's going to be this conversational shift from work from home to cloud technologies. Um, you know, I also think it'll be really interesting and again, create buying opportunities when you're sitting there watching these shifts, knowing very well that technology isn't going anywhere, that this is disruption caused by changes in interest rates that will normalize. Um, you know, in addition to that, we're going to re we're going to hit the one year anniversary of the market lows in March. And I do get curious if we're going to see some of that, um, some of these momentum right. investments starting to pick up a lot of value as they rebalance. And so picking up a simple right. um, value ETF may have a lot of tailwind in it in the weeks ahead. And I, I think that could be interesting. Right. But again, I may also trigger that that buying opportunity. I like what you said, that tech isn't going anywhere. Imagine if, if we didn't have tech, I couldn't be doing this show from the house. All four of us would have a string and a cup, and we'd be trying to get this thing done. <laughs> Scott, Nicole, Nancy, thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Meanwhile, folks...